Being a fan of Star Citizen is pretty hard right now. Or rather, I should say trying to play Star Citizen is hard right now, as the latest 3.18.2 patch once again attempts to push the game into a more playable state with some pretty rough results. While logging into the game seems to be in a much better state than before, the in-universe experience fluctuates from kinda buggy to totally unplayable. For all intents and purposes, the persistent universe has become the persistent testing universe. Last Last week, CIG ran a free fly event inviting anyone in to play the game with an over the weekend Xeno threat event designed to stress the heck out of the servers, which on one hand is good for getting important data to improve server stability, but on the other hand, as a player, it's not particularly enjoyable to try and navigate a barely functional overstressed universe. Compared to my previous experience with 3.16 and 3.17 versions of the game, the ability to play has gone downhill massively. Just in the past few days of playing, I've experienced most basic missions breaking to the point of being unable to complete them, invisible AI enemies spawning in the ground then killing me, bunker elevators not spawning, hangar doors not opening so I can't even get my ship out, quantum travel not working like at all, xeno threat mission progress not working, ship weapons not charging up, dead bodies body markers just not working, weapons and gear that I equipped on my character randomly disappearing, countermeasures not functioning, and countless other issues. And to be perfectly fair, while I have experienced most of these bugs before 3.18, I usually experience those spread out over a long period of time, not just in one or two play sessions. Now to be totally fair to CIG, the poor experience seems to be tied to the health of the server that you're on, and it did seem better before the massive Xeno threat event was triggered. So depending on what server the game throws you into, your experience could range from relatively pleasant to completely unplayable. And I really did try and hop around as best I could. I even logged on while writing this script to see if I could just get anything to work better. And I couldn't even leave my hangar due to the hangar doors just not opening no matter what I tried. So for me anyway, it's been quite literally unplayable at points. And certainly times like these, the arguments about CIG's development process begin to heat up. Some arguing that players just need to be more patient as the game is clearly still in alpha, while others point out that they've been waiting 10 years for this game to become more playable since their original pledge. The split development process between Squadron 42's single player campaign and Star Citizen's multiplayer experience is also frequently brought up, with CIG claiming that most of the progress made in Squadron 42's single player tech will make its way into the persistent universe, so it's okay for them to focus most of their dev team on the single player right now. However, the rate at which those features and progress are being delivered into Star Citizen seems to be so slow, it's hard to frame this argument in a positive way, especially when Star Citizen's new content is often delivered in extremely rough states. That said, CIG is barreling toward another patch with more content on the way. Patch 319 just had a large info dump from the closed testing process, highlighting many of the new things that we'll experience. Now, personally, I do have a hard time getting excited about more content when I can barely get my ship off the landing pad, but nonetheless, progress is being pushed forward even if the game is buggier than it's been in a long time, which makes sense due to the nature of dev teams. The people making the content continue to work on that content even if the server team is struggling to get things stable. Now, one of Star Citizen Citizen's biggest yearly events, Invictus Launch Week, is fast approaching and it should be active in the last week of May. This massive event is often accompanied by a free fly for players to try out the game, huge ship sales, usually some new ships being released, plus large fleet maneuvers and showcases from the UEE Navy that are honestly pretty impressive. And I kind of guess it makes sense why CIG would be stressing their servers so heavily now to the point of breaking them if the goal is to make Invictus launch week as stable as possible. But I do have a hard time imagining them getting everything ironed out over the course of the next month. Then again, in the past month, the team seems to have fixed the logon issues, so perhaps the next month they can fix most of the stability issues. Now regarding the new 319 info dump, players are currently testing the new Loreville cityscape. This is probably the main highlight 
highlight of the patch showcasing a complete revamp on one of the first major landing zones of the game, and it does look quite impressive. Another major update coming with 319 is a new player experience tutorial, something the game has needed for a long time. This will teach players the basics of getting into the verse. And I'm pretty curious to see exactly how this functions, just because Star Citizen is relatively complicated, and the tutorial is supposed to cover the first 30 minutes. Unfortunately, a lot of playing Star Citizen is learning to navigate the bugs, and it would be kind of funny if the tutorial actually addressed these sorts of issues like quantum jumping not working on the first try and stuff like that. Salvage contracts are coming with 319 as well, offering specific salvage missions versus just roaming around looking for derelict spaceships. This sounds like a good and much needed update. Now, Star Citizen's PvP missions have led to some of the most fun moments in the verse, in my opinion, and there's going to be a new PvP style mission coming to Ghost Hollow on Microtech. The Ghost Hollow location is really cool with a derelict reclaimer and a massive forest, and I think that'll make a great combat zone for some good PvP action. A new neat looking feature using tractor beams to remove ship weapons is also coming in this patch. This is the first step toward ship stripping as internal components are likely coming next. This should make salvage gameplay far more interesting and allow players who aren't even running salvage ships to potentially get gear and items off of abandoned ships that they find. A few new mystery vehicles are listed in the info dump, which will likely be revealed at the Invictus event. This is pretty typical, but the ships in Star Citizen are usually pretty exciting to check out for the first time, so it is something I'm definitely excited to see. Now, some of the more interesting nuggets of this 319 patch info dump revolve around the Siege of Orison and also something to do with a Bengal carrier docking during Invictus. Some new voice lines have been extracted from the game files, indicating that PvP is now being acknowledged at the Siege of Orison event. I'm not sure if this means it's going to be encouraged, as the line mostly just warns players that other players are killing or hostile at the event, and it also looks like they might be looking to limit the size of the Siege of Orison event so it can fill up and then you won't actually be able to participate. In my opinion, the Siege of Orison does need quite a bit of work to become a more enjoyable experience for the casual player, and it does seem like CIG is testing stuff here, though some players seem to be upset by the idea of PvP becoming more of a focus. Now there's also a single voice line from this info dump indicating that the Bengal carrier is docking at the Invictus event. And I don't believe that we've seen the Bengal docked like this before. I could be wrong, but I didn't see anything when Googling this. Now the massive Javelin Destroyer has docked before, which has allowed players to do a limited tour of the inside, which has been really impressive. If something similar like this is offered with the Bengal, that could be absolutely epic. Obviously though, nothing is confirmed on this front, but it would be nice if CIG gave us some surprises to help boost player morale this year. 2023 is turning into a pretty rough year for Star Citizen's playability, with the first major patch for the game being massively delayed, followed up with that patch being insanely unstable once it was deployed. We're heading into May, and the outlook for the rest of the year is kind of up in the air. The persistent entity streaming tech that came with 318 has proven to be a massive challenge for the devs, and there seems to be an even bigger challenge down the road as we approach the 4.0 update with server meshing. Though it's hard to say how far we are from that specific patch as ideally I think they're trying to hit a testing phase before the end of the year, but with all the delays and slowdowns, it's hard to know. Star Citizen is absolutely fun to watch its progress and gameplay from a distance, but getting into the game to actually run missions has been a fairly painful experience for me anyway. Again, I think this varies a lot depending on the server that you join or what part of the world you're playing in, but many players I know personally are taking a break until issues smooth out, which of course is an issue in itself as CIG needs large player counts to stress test the system and find the major bugs. Hopefully this latest free fly event gave them a lot of useful data for the next patch. I'll personally continue to drop in and test the game as stability improves, so be sure to stay tuned for progress reports on that front. I'd be curious to know what your experiences have been like with the latest patch. Have you hopped on a good servers? Has it been more or less okay or a complete disaster? Let me know in the comments and next up check out this extremely realistic new first person shooter that really shows what the latest Unreal Engine assets can do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.